It's lunchtime, so we're gonna go out and pick some of our food from the garden today. Instead of eating lunch. Instead of eating lunch. This is our lunch. There's no lunch better than the lunch that you find in the garden, right? What's that for? Are you giving the cool look? <laughs> Jason's working from home today, so um, he's gonna uh, make use of being at home on his lunch break to come out with us and it's a great way to break pick up your lunch. day. Yep. Yep, pick my lunch. <laughs> no, I'm gonna pick my lunch. Nobody else gets anything. <laughs> what about you, Lana? <laughs> You're just gonna eat and have fun, huh? Yep. And share. And share. Oh, that's sweet little Lana. <laughs> <laughs> I can never walk by here without grabbing a handful of them, stuffing them all in my mouth. Oh, Daddy. There's so many that are uh, yeah, available for pickings. There's so many raspberries. So this is our raspberry patch right here. So we started this patch last year, was it? No, the year before. Was it the year before? Yeah, and then we added a couple last year, and now it's really filling in this year. So we do all of the golden raspberries. These are the variety Anne, and they are so good. We do more of these because we just prefer the flavor. But we did do some red raspberries in here as well. This year we just added two ad additional plants right in front of Jason there actually. And those are supposed to be the thornless raspberries. Yeah, I was actually Sophie. gonna say, um, earlier this morning Lana found some some red raspberries. So it's the perfect size for snacking and eating fresh daily. We have a lot right now. We'll have some fresh and we could probably even freeze a couple quart size bags. But if you wanna do a big, large freezing harvest, you would have to do a patch that's a little bit bigger than this. Right. <laughs> Are those nice and sweet, Sela? Yeah. With raspberries too, you always got to kind of explore in there a little bit. A lot of times there's ones that are that are hiding in there and they all kind of hang downward. So you got to kind of lift up the plant. You can see what's there. Sometimes find the best ones that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. First you always got to check them. Yep, check them for what? Bugs. <laughs> bugs, ticks. Sela says ticks. Nope, just bugs. So how long do the raspberry bushes produce for usually? Well these will just kind of be done once everything you see on them now in all of the white ones then they'll be done. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they produce a lot out at once. Got it. Yeah. Got it. I have to enjoy some too. These are like brand new plants that are that are coming up. So these probably won't produce until next year then. Um, they yeah, still... no, they still, you see that flower on oh, top? Oh, yeah, yeah, never mind. Yep, okay. Yeah, so they, they still will produce, but it's a very minimal amount. It, yeah. And then the third year, ex they're extremely sure. giving. You just kind of, oh my gosh, that was such a good one I yes. just had. Oh my gosh, it tastes like raspberry flavored candy. Mm. I got a raspberry stomachache. Uh-oh, did yeah, you eat too many peas. raspberries? Starting to get full on raspberries, too. We better go get some peas then, and then we can come back and pick more. Balance it out with peas. Yeah, we need our greens now. Let's go get our greens. All right, there you go. So we did most of our food out in our ground plot out here. So we'll show you what it looks like right now. It's a little weedy, but uh, can't keep everything looking perfect, you know? No, we can't. Our peas are down over here on the end. Make sure that, they, uh, that they're fat. So no, 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 not yet. And yes, 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 right now. Yeah. And definitely not yet. Yep, so we got lots coming. There'll be lots ready. But there's still, there'll be lots to pick too. Yep, so this is our favorite variety, the, the Maxigolt variety, which is which is a shelling pea. Right there. But they get seven to eight peas per pod, and they're super sweet. They're just so good. They get such big, 
big large peas on the inside. They look so mm -hmm. good. Look at these ones. Oh look boy. Let me see, Sayla. Oh my goodness. Look at these. Yeah, these are Ooh. good ones. Here. I'm so happy the kids love peas because I love peas and I love growing tons of them. And now that I know that they like them, we have to grow even more. So we actually have two rows of peas here. And then we do have like a quarter row down over here. Mana, it's just a ladybug. Those are good. There's always lots of ladybugs out here because peas are really prone to getting aphids and they will just tear them up. We come out for the peas, they come out for the aphids. A bug's life. How do you eat? A bug's life. I would love that life sometimes. <laughs> as long as we weren't dealing with other big bugs. Yeah, right. Or birds. <laughs> There's so many on here, girls. We have a lot of picking to do. And eating. Mm -hmm. And eating, that's for sure. Looks so good. Always have to look underneath. Underneath is where the first peas start. Yep, and then when you kind of harvest them, it allows them to kind of focus on the other ones that aren't ready yet. So if you see. Oh, that's a good one. So even though you see a few splitting, a lot of times they get kind of dry and um, bitter, but these ones will not be. It's just they can't all fit in there. Mmm, it's so sweet. So do you like the raspberries better or the peas? Both. Peas. <laughs> I already knew the answer to that. I mean, if I could eat peas all day, every day, forever, I'll I'd be happy. Two, four, six. I got six peas. Very good. Big peas. Yeah, probably, at least. So forever you guys have always asked, do you have problems with deer? And I was always like, no, because we never have had problems with deer. And all of a sudden, like, I think you guys are jinxing me or something, because this year <laughs> we have deer and it's driving me nuts because we weren't prepared for it. The best way to keep deers out of your garden, deers. <laughs> the best way to keep those deers out of your garden <laughs> are um, just by putting in a fence. So they've been, uh, eating the tops of our our peas over here and they've also kind of come on to the beans and they have all of their little prints in the soil so Ooh, yummy. they've left the evidence Ooh, yum, they're yum. completely guilty oh you gonna eat that <laughs> <laughs> gotcha you did <laughs> <laughs> So those are the peas we are just picking. Next to it are another set of peas. Those are the sugar snap peas. Those will probably be ready later this week, or I think this weekend. Down here we have uh, beans. And then on the end here we have some zucchini. Yep, I see we've got some, uh, some zucchini. I like them to get just a little bit bigger, so. Probably by tomorrow, those two will be ready. Oh yeah, there's another one there. Pretty soon, it looks like we're gonna have like an overload of zucchini soon. As you can see, we've got a lot of weeding to do. And in this row here, this is where we have our pickles. They're doing pretty good. And then halfway down, we have our tomatoes. Now those have actually also been snatched and eaten by the the deer so they're still doing okay they're still setting some flowers we have had a lot of dry weather so I keep moving this soaker hose that you kind of see along the bottom here and that's kind of how we've been watering this garden and we've only done that twice so far this year the kale's looking nice it's definitely ready you can start harvesting it could have already started harvesting it like a week ago 
We like making a lot of chips actually with, with kale. And then our kohlrabis. These are the giant ones, so they're meant to get even bigger than what they are right now. And we love making like these Parmesan garlic chips in the oven with it. So we slice them real thin, toss them around in some avocado oil, and then lay them out flat on a pan. Oh, it's so good. I don't think that's doing much, hon. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> Got those two weeds, we're good. <laughs> we are set for the rest of the year. Here's a row of just flowers. So straw flowers, status flowers, and then a mix at the end. We've got a row of our melons here. We've got a few additional peppers out here. We do have some in our raised beds. And then broccoli on this side over here. This was a second batch to do just a little bit later. So that way it starts producing its head when it gets just a little bit cooler at night for us. So in between the peppers and the broccoli over here, we planted some state fair zinnias just for cut flowers. But then the broccoli's over here and as you can see there's quite a bit of leaf damage. Uh, when they come in here, these are from all those, the worms. So this is really from those white moths that you see a lot of. They're laying their, their worms here, their eggs, and then they, they get the worms. That's what all that damage is. We use Monterey BT and we haven't, as you can see, used anything out here. This was actually out of sight, out of mind, so I haven't been able to keep up with that. Once again, the zinnias to kind of break it up. State Fair zinnias are great. They get nice and tall and they get multiple flowers per plant and they're just really meant for cutting for flowers. So they're a great cut flower. And every time you cut one down, it just allows the plant to keep growing bushier and create more flowers. So that's always a great combination. I like doing the mix because then you get pinks and yellows and oranges and all different shades. Over here, we've got some more cabbage. We do have some in the raised bed. I love how it looks in the raised bed, but we also like eating it. So some more cabbage. And then over here, we have the Brussels sprouts. These are actually looking pretty good. We gotta hit everything with the Monterey BT. The Monterey BT is an organic option, so that's kind of, we really try to keep our food more organic. As you can see, I did just recently put some fresh worm castings. I just top dressed it around the plant. We've been using that more so as our fertilizer out here. We did use Agro Thrive in the beginning. We were using our injector through the soaker hose out here to really push out that agro thrive as we water. And then in the pail dropped a little mouse. So it kind of, you know, made that mixture gross. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so I had to toss it. It was contaminated. So then we had to get rid of the agro thrive, which kind of sucks because agro thrive's expensive, but it does work really well. So that's why we like using it. So that's why I had worm castings in the garage and I'm like, I need something out here. So I threw that out here. And then over here we do have two additional plants of zucchini. So if the other ones kind of go bad, we got more. There's some coming on there. There's larger ones on the other plants too. My grandma Nani, she's a full blood Italian and she, they always loved these flowers. These carry so many great nutrients. They're actually really healthy for you. But they used to fry them, which most likely takes away all the nutrients. But they used mm -hmm. to fry them and they used to eat them like for their meals and stuff. So I've never done it personally. Huh. But Interesting. Yeah. Uh-oh. Now Jason's going to have me fry. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'll just try it raw. Now these look like unique zucchinis because, so the ones that were planted over on the other side, you guys, those are plants that I got from my dad already done. These are ones that I directly sowed out here that I, uh, of like some leftover seeds that I had. And these look a lot like longer and they have more of like a, a variegation on them. So that'll be interesting to see. Like, uh, Armenian, uh, Cucumber. Yeah, almost a little bit like the Armenian mm -hmm. cucumber, yeah. Of course, dividing. We use the zinnias. You gotta add a little color even out here. And then we just finished the row off here with some peas. And over here, after the melons, we finished the row off with some dill, some additional dill. And it's just starting to pop up. Oh, look at, we got a black swallowtail out here. 
they love the dill. That's why we always let it kind of come up early on too in the in our garden. They're just so like, I just think they're so cute. What do you think, Lana? They look like a train. <laughs> a train? Yeah, like those two yellow things are the headlights. Mm-hmm. One the train and those are the seats. Those are the seats. <laughs> well, hop on. <laughs> okay. Get in I don't want to touch it. Are your hands clean? They probably are. Clean enough. Yeah. You, there's no pesticides. Oh, it feels weird. Yeah. Uh oh. What is Look that? Look at his little. Uh, he's like, hey, get Are those me. its antennas? I think so. Yeah. Ew, they're gooey. <laughs> he's they like, get out of here. Of, uh, protection. Oh defense. yeah, for sure. For sure. What? What the heck are those? <laughs> Look at they pop out of yeah. his head. He's like, get out of here. Look at him fighting you. That is so <laughs> funny. Just leave him alone though. We don't want to stress him. They can get stressed. Just like we can. If someone bothers us, we get stressed, right? <laughs> but yeah, so the dills, you know, just starting to come up here. I've got a lot of weeding to do. You can hardly see it because of the weeds, but we do our best. And then the end here we left open because this is going to be for another row of a late batch of peas and beans. Uh, the second set of beans will also help with canning. And then the second set of peas will fulfill us when the other ones are done. Right. <laughs> you probably see a lot of sunflowers out here too. We actually didn't seed any other than a few at the end of each row just for fun. But these are all volunteers too. This one's so pretty. The sunflowers are always just such a happy flower and I love having them in the garden. So some years when we have a lot of volunteers, I just let the volunteers go. But if you have volunteers, just know that they're the ones that are gonna flower the quickest. So it is still nice to always seed some on your own. So that way you get them, you know, at different times of the season. It's kind of like your succession seeding, so spreading out the times that you seed at so that way you can enjoy them for a longer period of time. I like that it's um, multi-branching too. Yeah, yeah, I love those ones. You can see there's gonna be a lot more that come up here. Yeah, it's not just a single. Mm -hmm. And then we lost the kids' attention. <laughs> we still got Fuzzy though. She still thinks we're cool. <laughs> Aw, she's just the sweetest little kitty cat. The garden's just getting so beautiful. I just feel like I wanna make so many more videos, but it's like sometimes I get kind of cluttered. Like, what do I film first? Sure, yeah. There's just so much, you know? and everything's just as equally as beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to do another tour soon. Everything's just getting so huge and abundant and beautiful and I just love it. This side of the garden, oh my goodness. This opal basil, it's so gorgeous with those calendulas and the snaps. Mm-hmm. smells amazing, doesn't it? Does. It? Well, we can save this for the next video. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 